Joining us now, Independent Senator Angus King of Maine. He is a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Senator King, thank you so much for being with us. What can you tell us about this information from Microsoft and how does it reconcile or align with what you have learned inside the Intelligence Committee? Well, the first thing, John, it's ironic and sort of sad that we're getting this intelligence from Microsoft, a, a private company, and not from our own intelligence community. Uh, I'm glad Microsoft is doing it. I'm glad they're making this information pri uh, public. That's exactly what should be happening. And the, the answer is yes, uh, this is going on. Uh, we've known for some time that R Russia's in the lead. I mean, I, I don't think there's much doubt about that. China and Iran are also poking around in our election systems. We're not clear on exactly what their motivations are, but they're following the Russian playbook. But the Russians are the most active. But the thing that bothers me, John, is that we're getting this information from Microsoft and not from the people that we're paying billions of dollars for to, to, to give us uh, information. It, it really bothers me that the director of national intelligence recently said he's no longer going to personally brief Congress uh, but between now and the election about election security. That's wrong. That's a that's a, uh, a dereliction of duty, and it's an insult to the American people. So, yes, DNI, the director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe, has said he will no longer brief members of Congress in person. Uh, add that to the information we've received over the last few days from this whistleblower inside the Department of Homeland Security, Brian Murphy, who was head of intelligence in Homeland Security, who says that he had information about Russian attacks on the election and was told not to make it public because it would embarrass the president. So you have those two things at once. And my question to you, Senator, is again, based on your position, you see things we don't. How much does this administration, does this White House really want to keep Russia out of the 2020 elections? Well, that's a really good question. And, and there's no evidence that they do. Uh, and, and you're right to put those two dots together. I reread the whistleblower complaint last night. And again, we have to note that those are allegations. Those are unproven. But uh, he's going to be appearing before the House Intelligence Committee, I think, next week. And basically, he's, he's saying the, the worst nightmare, my worst nightmare is politicians telling intelligence people what to report and what not to report. Uh, that leads, that's a ca catastrophic scenario because then we're, the decision makers aren't getting straight information. And uh, his allegations, and, and by the way, this is a guy who's a, a direct decorated Marine, former FBI agent, uh, dedicated to, to trying to talk to it and tell it straight. And he lists time after time where he was told to downplay this, to not report that, and to actually try to change the numbers in one case. So, um, this is really a concern, and and it, it if and, and then you go back, connect another dot, and go back and read volume five of our intelligence committee report on the Russian actions in sixteen, and the Trump campaign, they were acting in parallel. Uh, they may not, they didn't have an agreement to work together, but each knew what the other was doing. Each being the Trump campaign and the Russians, and that appears to be the case today. The president said publicly about six months ago, if he was offered help by a foreign government, he'd, he'd take it, he'd listen. Uh, and that appears to be what's happening. There's no question the Russians are active in this campaign. And now our intelligence, uh, leader of our intelligence community has basically said, uh, you know, we're, we're not gonna tell you what's going on, or we're only gonna tell you in writing, mm -hmm. which is not adequate, because you can't get at the, at the facts. Another issue surrounding the country right now, obviously, is the pandemic, overwhelming in some cases the nation. And we now have new information about what the president knew, what he understood and when, and what he decided to tell or not tell or mislead the American public with. I want to listen to a little bit of the president on tape talking to Bob Woodward. Well, I think, Bob, really, to be honest with you, sure, I want you to I be. wanted to uh, I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down. Yes, sir. because I don't want to create a panic. What does that tell you, Senator? When you hear that, what does that tell you? Well, when I heard that, uh, number one, of course, it, it's uh, amazing, and I, I don't know how to describe it, that a president would be saying one thing in private and another thing in public. But this idea of not creating a panic, uh, what if the president treated hurricane warnings that way? You know, a hurricane is headed for New Orleans, but we don't want to create a panic, so we're not going to warn people. So twice as many people get wiped out in the hurricane than would otherwise. That's nonsense. Uh, that, that's not leadership. You, you, obviously, you don't want to create a panic, but there are ways, he said something about jumping up and down. Nobody asked him to jump up and down. Just tell us the truth. 
And, and if he told us the truth in February and March, when he knew, when he knew uh, how serious this was and how deadly it was, and instead he's going on TV and saying, well, it's just like the flu. He told Woodward it wasn't just like the flu. At the same time, he was talking about it's just like the flu. And he's still talking today about how it's going to pass. We've turned the corner. It's, it reminds me of the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, and we're still losing a thousand people a day and 40,000 new cases a day. So, um, yeah, you know, this business about not creating a panic, I think the reality is he didn't want to create a panic in the stock market. And, uh, but uh, to not warn the people and tell them straight what was going on, and it's continuing right up till the day. But what we learned from Woodward changed it from simply incompetence to really uh, mendacity. Uh, it, it was, uh, he was deliberately misleading the people, and that's inexcusable. Look, the president likes to compare himself to Winston Churchill. Maybe a more apt comparison, at least on trying to make it seem like everything's okay, is Neville Chamberlain, who declared there was peace in our time, the president declaring that we've turned the corner. I do want to ask you, uh, there's a lot of talk, obviously, about law enforcement around the country. And we have heard from cities and city councils around the country about defunding or changing funding for police departments. And the president has seized on this. But you, I know, look at it another way when it comes to funding police and who or who isn't doing so. How so? Well, you know, yesterday, the, the, uh, Mitch McConnell put a bill on the Senate floor that was wholly inadequate. But one of the ways it was inadequate was it didn't provide any assistance whatsoever to states and cities and communities who are struggling with enormous, uh, number one, additional expenditures, but also revenue losses. They've got to cut their budgets. They can't, they can't write checks like the federal government. They can't borrow for operational costs. And so the net result is a cut in first responder uh, uh, positions. The, the irony is, it was Mitch McConnell, it's Mitch McConnell and his Republican colleagues who are defunding the police, literally, because police forces across the country are having to cut back. They're having to furlough people. I, I read just this morning that, uh, they, I, th I think it was New York, one, one of the cities is, is having to cancel a whole new class of police recruits uh, because they don't have the money to pay them. Uh, and, and this is just a straightforward reality. So the irony is they're trying to use this defund the police thing against Joe Biden when the, what hap what's happening is the police are being defunded as a matter of fact because of the failure of, of the administration and Mitch McConnell and his colleagues in the Senate to put a bill on the floor that will provide some support to the police. Mm -hmm. And the first responders and the police and the fire department. So that was what was uh, really, I thought, shocking and disappointing about what happened yesterday.